Hi, Leroy here. Today we're going to be talking about using samples on a kit track specifically. Uh, before we do that, we need to talk about envelopes, gates, and triggers. Uh, we've just started a brand new project on the Verse Lab. If you want to follow along, just start a new project. We'll get to the kit track in just a second. But first, let's talk about envelopes. Typically, when you talk about envelopes, you're going to see a shape that looks kind of like this. I want to make sure I'm in camera here. Uh-huh. Okay, it's kind of like this, kind of like a, a mountain, right? And oftentimes it'll be labeled like this. A, whoops, sorry. Dang it. Do, 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 do. There we go. A, D, S, and R. Uh, each of these values is a value of time, except for the S. This right here, this S, this portion, um, that's not time, that's a level, and we're going to talk about that right now. So what these things are, um, it's an acronym. ADSR is uh, Attack, Decay, Sustain, and Release. Um, so um, let's talk about how that works right now. We'll go over to the synth, and we will look at that. One moment, please. Move this over here to our little synth. Uh, this is Arturia's Micro Freak. Um, so... On this micro freak, we have, um, yeah, we can hear that. All right. Um, we have, uh, the ability to change this envelope. You notice it has attack, decay, release, and sustain. Um, decay and release on this are together, which is a little, it's not necessarily unusual, but you'll see them separated often as well to different controls. So we can see this graphically. If we go up to the little screen here, and we can see if we turn, say, the attack knob, Right, and we can turn the decay and release knobs and move down sustain. Notice how this starts to look a lot like the little shape that we just saw, right? Let's see if I can zoom in on that just a little bit here. There we go. Maybe a little bit better. Doesn't really want to focus, but um, anyway. So what, what does this do? How does this work? Um, before we get there, let's talk about the difference between um, a trigger and a gate. Uh, we're just going to uh, even these out here. All right, so first of all, um, a, a gate. A gate is uh, li like a floodgate, uh, letting in water or something, right? Um, or a, a gate in a fence that's going to let people in and out. As long as you're holding your finger down on something, the gate is open and noise will come out on a synth. That's how it works. So like on this, if I push a button, push a key, it's going to go for as long as I'm holding down the key. That's a gate. Um, and looking at this envelope, you can see it's just, it's on and off. Right? That, that is a gate. A trigger is something you see typically on drum machines, and it's when you, you push a button, no matter how long you hold it down, it just sends a quick pulse, and then it plays a sound. Um, oftentimes it'll go through an envelope, but no matter how long you hold down the key, it's gonna, it's gonna play whatever it's gonna play. It's gonna play either just a single sound, or it's gonna play just through the envelope one time. Um, that, that's how a trigger works. And you'll see that a lot in drum machines, especially. We will get into that on the verse lab. Um, so just know that, that triggers and gates are a thing. Gates mean as long as you hold down your, your key, you're going to get a note. Okay. So let's look at the envelope now and see how that works with this. So first of all, let's look at attack. When we're looking at these stages. Again, we had ADSR, right? Attack, decay, sustain, and release. Attack is how long it takes when you push down a key. It goes from the volume of zero up to 100% volume. Decay is the time it takes to go from the loudest point to whatever level you have sustain set at. Remember we said that, that sustain is a level, not a value of time. So decay goes from the highest volume down to whatever sustain is at. And as long as you hold your finger on the key, it's going to keep playing that note forever. When you let go of the key, it goes to the release stage. And this is how long it takes to go from whatever volume you're at at sustain to zero. So let's look at that at the synth over here to see how that works in practice. So right now, if we look at the curve, we see it's just, here's, this is sustain, okay? Sustain is how loud it is when you keep your finger on the key. So let me put this camera down for a second. So again, if I just hold down my finger on the key, this is a, this is a gate. It's going to be at that volume forever. Sustain sets how loud that is while I'm holding down my finger, right? At zero, it's nothing. 100%, it's 100% full, right? That, that's all sustain does, is tell the level of, of your finger, of, of you, when your finger's on the note, how loud is it going to be? Let's look at attack now. Attack is how long it takes to go from zero to full volume. So here we go. We're going to bump this up just a little bit. Right now it's at, uh, it's at zero, so it's, it's on instantly. Let's move it up to about a second. There, there, one second, okay? Kind of fades in a bit. Let's move it up more. See what it sounds like at 10 seconds. 
Right? It's going to take 10 seconds to go from nothing to full volume. It kind of it fades in. That's what attack does. What does uh, release do? Notice this tail end, a release here. If we move this over a little bit. So the release is setting how long it takes from when you you let your finger off of the key, when you release the key, for it to die out. If we set this to 25 seconds, that's the maximum value here. Watch what happens when I push a key. It just keeps playing. It's fading out slowly, slowly, slowly. It takes 25 seconds to go to zero. Uh, we can shorten that down. Instead of being at zero. Right? Having a little bit of release gives it some sustain at the end. Makes it sound really nice. Uh, again, on this synth, the decay and release are the same. But notice that um, when I'm moving this, the, the decay doesn't do anything, right? That's because my sustain is 100%. Decay is the time it takes to go from the 100% volume after attack down to the sustain level. So if sustain is 100%, it's going to stay at 100%. So all decay is going to do is increase the time it takes. Let's look at this. Let's bring sustain down a bit and look at this. So right now, decay is at is it zero. So it's just, it's quick. It's instantly going down to the, to the, the lower volume. Let's increase that just a bit. Increasing it. Now it's going to take five seconds to go from the loudest point down to sustain. Just kind of fades off. But then as long as I'm holding this key down, it's going to stay at this volume. And when I let go, it's going to go to release. So it doesn't die away. Uh, it doesn't die away instantly. It takes five seconds for this, sorry, for this release stage after sustain for the release to come in. Okay. Um, so we can also add attack to that. And if we add attack, it's going to take some time to come in to full volume and then go from full volume down to the sustain level. Then we let go. It's going to go to the release value. So let's try that out. Now it's going to stay at this level until I let go of the key. You can also set sustain down to say zero. Check this out. So I'm holding down the key, but it's going to do the same whether I hold down the key or just press it. Because as soon as as soon as you let go of the key, it goes through a release stage. And because decay and release are the same on this synth, it doesn't matter if I hold it down on this one or not, as long as it gets to full volume. All right. Um, so you can shorten this up too to make it like a little a little bit percussive. Shorten up the attack a bit. Shorten up the decay. Okay, we don't have to be experts on how the envelope works. We have the general idea now. Uh, envelope has typically four stages. Attack, decay, sustain, release. Sustain is a level. The rest are time values. How long does it take to do everything? That, that's going to be important now. Let's look at the verse lab, get into it, and see how this pertains to us when dealing with this specific device. So starting out uh, with the default project, it starts a song. We're going to go to sequencer, and we're going to go to the kit track. We're just going to work in the kit track today. And next time we'll work on, uh, on tone tracks and especially longer samples. But anyway, so a kit track uh, by default is just using uh, triggers. So no matter how long you hold down this note, it's not going to change it. And if you let it go really quickly, this, this one sustains a little bit. It's it's uh, open hi-hat. Notice I just pressed it for a little bit, but it keeps going, right? It's a trigger. It's just playing this sample. And for all short samples, it's going to work that way on the Verse Lab. We, I should reiterate, too. Remember, the Verse Lab is not designed to deal with really long samples. It's not designed to work live. It, this is typically designed to be used, you know, this, the kit track is designed to be used like as a drum kit. Even if you clear the, the kit track out, if you clear the track and make a new track, it even tells you the name. It's drum kit track. It's looking for short samples that play very short. That, that's what a drum kit is designed to do, right? Um, that, that's it. Short samples. Um, so that, that's what this does very well. If you want to make longer samples, it gets more difficult. Um, let's also look at how it handles polyphony. Notice you can play... You can play a bunch of different notes all at once, right? So you can play, you know, a, a clap and a, high, and a, a snare at the same time, or a hi-hat and a kick and a, a ride over here. You can, you can play all these things at once, but it also uses something called mute groups or choke groups. Well, listen to this. So you've got this. 
it sustains a little bit, right? But watch. When I push this, this other one, this closed hi-hat, it mutes it. But it doesn't happen to other things. It keeps playing. Why does it stop playing when I play this, this note? Well, okay. In a hi-hat, if you, if you remember how a drum kit works, a hi-hat can be open or closed. If it's open, it'll sustain a little bit and sound a little crispier, a little higher. And when you push the foot pedal, it's going to close that down and stop this open hi-hat. So the, the verse lab gives us thing called mute groups. If we look at, um, I think it's shift. Nope, sorry. It's edit and then the pad. Um, we've got an instrument edit. And if we scroll down, scroll, 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 notice it says mute group one, and this is pad three. If we hit pad four, it's also in mute group one. Pad two is off, one is off, five is off. All of these are off. The mute group is off except for three and four. You can put as many things as you want in a mute group. If you put like, say this one in the same mute group, mute group one, now listen. Now, now, if you play another pad in the same mute group, it's going to mute every other one. You can only play one in that group at a time. Again, that's useful if you just want one thing playing at a time, like with a hi-hat. Anyway, um, just wanted to show you the mute group so you understood how that worked, um, how one sound can mute another if you need it to. Um, let's now record a, a simple, some simple sounds and then use them in this kit to see how that works. Um, we're going to use the, let's say, the built-in microphone. Um, and we're going to set it to record trigger enter. Good. All right. Let me turn down the, the volume here so we don't get a lot of feedback. I'm using the built-in mic. This is just going to be simple to show you how to record some sounds and how to set them on the kit track. Turning the mic on, going to the sampling engine. Yeah. Okay. Recorded a couple of sounds. Um, we can now go to, let's normalize it first. Normalizing just brings the, the peak value up to you know, the, the range you set, which at this point is zero. Um, see, normalized level zero. Uh, we're going to slice it now. Slicing hard will give you a lot of slices. Um, that's not what we want. We want it to be very, very big slices. Uh, we want it to find individual sounds. We're going to leave it as soft right now. Let it slice this up. Turn off the mic. Turn off the mic so I don't get feedback. Turn the headphones back on. Now we can go down to slice point and listen to what we sliced. Okay, there's our little, our little kick drum. So now that we've uh, looked at slice point six, we're like, okay, we know what that sound is. Let's put it on uh, where the bass drum is. We'll put it here. And it's going to say, hey, you want to set that sample? And we say, yes, set that there. So we're in the kit track on pad one. Let's find another one. Okay, there, there's our little, our little snare sound at point nine. Let's hit pad two, put it on pad two. Okay, it's gonna put that there. What else do we have? Okay, we got a little hi hat. Put that here. That's number 12. Your mileage may vary. What else do we have? Yeah. Okay, we got that annoying yeah sound. Great. Put that on 13. And finally. Yeah. Mm, great. We have that annoying sound. Let's put it on pad 16. All right. So a couple of things to remember. Remember, we, we've got, uh, it triggers, right? So now we can, we can exit out of here. We're not going to use any more of these sounds, but check it out. Yeah. Not all that useful, but that's it. That's all we have to do to get our sounds from the sampler onto our onto our pads, okay? We can go back and edit these if we want. Like if we wanted this, it's really distorted in the beginning. So if we wanted to change that, we could hold down, uh, hit edit, hit the pad, go to instrument, edit. And we can then do, 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 do. Uh, oh, that's the wrong one. Sorry, I, I do that all the time. We have to go to section select, edit, hit the, the section we're in. And we go down to uh, pad 16, no. Um, and 16, we were just there. How do we, I'm trying to, hmm, hold on, hold on, hold on. There it is, there it is. Uh, clip set, no, not clip set. I was just doing this earlier. Oh, it's because I was, I was in a, that's right, I was on a tone track, sorry. Different in a tone track uh, versus a, um, a kit track. Um, you can hit edit here. 
and then you go down to sample edit. There we go. All right. So you could set the start point. Remember, each of these numbers in start in the in the sample edit is a single sample. Since we're recording at CD quality sound, 44,100 samples per second, that means for one second of audio, we're gonna need to go 44,100 samples forward, which is a lot. You can hold down shift, make it go faster, but still, it's only going a couple hundred per turn. If you wanna listen to what it sounds like, you can hit the load button. No, you cannot. What? Hmm. Sorry. What am I doing today? I am off my game. All right, sample edit. Why can we not? Oof. Okay, sorry, I'm, I'm mixing up things with tone tracks and kit tracks. Apparently we can't hear, um, uh, there we go. So we can just hit edit pad, go to sample edit, and then we can just hit the pad to hear what it sounds like with that edit. We need to do a lot more of that to get that distorted part out. So let's keep scrolling through these numbers. Scroll, 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 scroll. It's still distorted, we're getting closer though. Again, it, it would be nice, we don't use this middle knob at all. It would be nice if Roland would let us use this middle knob to do more, um, more, uh, larger, um, scrolling through these, through these sound files, but they have not. A little better. We're almost there, almost there, almost there. Getting out the distortion. It's clipping a little bit at the beginning still. Okay, we're gonna leave that there for now. All right. So, um, in sample edit, you can also set a loop point. Um, so for instance, uh, if we go to, oh, let's go to this, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, so, uh, right now it's set for one shot, so loop isn't going to do anything. But if we set it to, say, forward, um, yeah, yeah, setting the yeah, loop level yeah, is going yeah, to, right yeah, now the loop is set yeah, as zero. Yeah, so it's yeah, going to keep looping yeah, wherever we set the loop point. If you start getting too many sounds, you can hold down shift and push the play button, that'll turn it off. So now. Notice it's just going to play it like this because, again, it's a trigger. If I hold it down, it's not going to make a difference. Do exactly the same thing if you hold it down or if you just press it once. Um, so it's going to loop whatever this point is in the sample. Again, we can we can continue to, to alter that, make it loop um, at a point that's way farther down the line if we want to um, for whatever effect we're looking for. Okay, fair enough. All right, what else can we do in sample edit? Um, we can still set the end point and the start point of the sample if we want to. Um, again, this mode is just for how it's gonna play back the sample. So if we go uh, one shot, it's just gonna play it once no matter what. If we play it in reverse, it's gonna go in reverse and then use the loop point in reverse. Reverse uh, one just plays reverse one time instead of forward one time. It's still, sorry, it was still playing the, the other one. Just one time. All right, um, so what else do we have in here? We got the level. This can control the the tone or the, the, let me turn off this loop point. Sorry, let me just set this back to one shot for now. All right, so uh, this is gonna affect the, the pitch. So this is in cents. 100 cents is a half step. So 50 cents is only a quarter of a step. So it's just for fine tuning something if it's just a little bit off. Um, the gain will set how loud it is. Uh, the key sets, this is, this is, this is for a tone track specifically. But it, it's gonna assume on a kit track, it assumes that whatever key you're pushing is C4. So if instead you're saying, Oh, the, the sample should be on C sharp four. Yeah. Yeah. It's still playing this yeah. as C four, so it's gonna sound lower. We'll look at that in the tone tracks a little bit later, but this is just to set where by default the sample is, is placed. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. I think that's it for this low, yeah. All right, so now let's look at the instrument edit. Um, this one gets a little interesting. So um, you can assign the mute group uh, like we talked about before. Um, so this one, yeah. Key offset. This is going to do the same thing as the the offset in um, uh, in the sample edit, where you're just setting how high or low the sample is. This is going in half steps. Um, this is the same thing as before. It's going in cents. So it's a quarter of a half step up or down. Very minor adjustments. Um, 
We're not gonna look at the cutoff or, the, or the, the, the filter stuff right now. Okay, so now we have some things we're familiar with. Attack, decay, and release. We don't have sustain. That's something that's a little weird to me. I'm sure in the synth engine we have sustain, but for some reason on the verse lab, we cannot set the sustain level. I have looked and tried and got through manuals and videos and experimented. As far as I can tell, the sustain level on this is always at 100%. Always. Um, but we can set the attack. Right now it's at zero. Yeah. We move it up. Whoops, sorry. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. Hear it fading in? Right, and decay. Again, decay is a weird one because since our sustain level is at 100%, all decay does is lengthen the amount of time it's going to play. Um, we're going to look at that in just a second. Uh, and then release is, again, how it fades off. We're going to look at that in just a second on pad 16 with that annoying sound I made. Oops. Uh, voice multi. This is important. Now listen. <laughs> It's playing multiple versions of the sample again and again and again. Let's see, maybe this will help. It's playing multiple versions yeah. of that sound against each other. Um, you can set that to uh, to single instead, and it'll just play one. Yeah. 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 Oops, sorry, we got to set it to single. No matter how many times you push it, when you push the button, it starts it over. On multi, it's gonna just, it's gonna keep what you're playing, playing, and then play a second copy of it. Right, do you hear that? Do you hear the little variations in there? And on single, it won't do that. It's just one version of that sample, one, one single uh, voice. Uh, envelope mode, this is important for longer samples. This is only in the kit track. This is not available in tone tracks. We'll touch on uh, next time. Sus uh, no sustain means the trigger. You push it, and it plays it. It's already fading out. You can hear it fading out already because um, it's following the envelope shape. So on no sustain, it's going to fade out. If you put it to sustain, it's going to hold that as long as you hold down your finger on the key for as long as the sample is. The sample was short. Um, so uh, next time we're gonna look at longer samples, we're gonna look at the, the uh, tone tracks. But part of the problem with the Verse Lab in, in these sample modes especially, is it's not made for long samples. It's made for short, short samples, like drum kit stuff, right? So if you want longer samples, you can do it by um, either putting on sustain. That is a fantastic way to do it. You put sustain on, and then you you know add a step. You can then edit the step and say, okay, we want the length to be 128 steps. So if if the sample were long enough, in fact, let's do that. Let's let's load in a different sample here. We'll load in something that's you know a minute and a half long. Uh, I just happen to have a minute and a half long wave file uh, that I made for testing. There we go. Minute and a half mono. Um, so what's going to happen here? The the maximum since since you're limited to 128 steps. The maximum sound you can put in a single section is going to be a minute and 36 seconds. If your tempo is at 40. If your tempo's at 80, it's half of that. It's like, you know, 46, 47 seconds. If your tempo's 160, it's going to be half of that. It's going to be like, you know, 20-something seconds. It's dependent specifically upon how long your section is. So if we play this 1 minute and 30 second uh, file, I'm going to turn this down. Now if you listen, it's already fading away. It certainly has not been a minute and 30 seconds, right? So what is going on? By default, this kit track has settings uh, for you know drum samples. They're not meant to be this long. So if you want this to be longer, to play out longer, you can you can set this. You can set a step and set it to be you know the length 128 steps. That's as long as you get in a single section. Um, and it takes a while to get there. You got to scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll. Um, but even if you do that, it's still going to fade out because right now it's following the envelope. And this envelope, by default, is telling it to fade out. It shouldn't be that long. It doesn't think. So 136 or a minute 36 seconds is as long as you can go. If you want to go longer, you need to do vocal takes. We're going to talk about vocal takes in an upcoming video. Vocal takes are really what you want to use when you're doing longer samples for something like ambient music or something. Anyway, so you set the length of 128 steps, but it's still going to fade out in just a few steps. So how do we fix that? A couple ways we can do that. Uh, first of all, we can go edit and hit the pad. We're going to hit shift and play to turn that off for now. Instrument edit. Uh, we can set it to sustain. If we set it to sustain, 
and we've edited the, you can either then just hold down the note. As long as you hold down this note, it's gonna play this, this sound. When you let go, it's gonna go to the release stage and it's gonna slowly start to fade away. Hear it fading away already, right? But as long as you hold down your finger on this note in sustain mode, it's going to continue playing that file. As long as the file is long enough, it'll continue playing it until you let go of the, the note. Um, so I'm gonna hit shift and push play again to stop this. So now that we've set this step to 128 steps, if we hit play, it's gonna just play this for 128 steps, whatever that is at, at this tempo. Um, again, tempo is going to be very, very important here because 128 steps is different depending on how fast your tempo is, right? Um, so section-wise, we can go up to 16 measures. So if we go up to 16 measures and we set our tempo again to the lowest, which is 40, 40, that's gonna give us a minute and 36 seconds. Um, interestingly, if we go, if we, uh, let's set the section to one measure right now. Uh, we have nothing else in these other sections. Right, we got nothing in these sections. I'll set them down for, to a measure as well. Um, it will retain what's happening uh, with the the envelope into one other section. So if we go into song mode, for instance, hit record, we'll just set you know each of these sections to be one. Um, notice when it gets to the the yellow section, which has nothing. Whoops, I did. How did I do that? There we go. Having a heck of a time today. There we go. All right. Um, when it gets done playing the, the red section, it's still gonna play the sound we're playing here. Notice it's going through, it's going through. Now it's gonna go to the second section where our sample is not. Still playing as it goes through this, but now it's playing the, it, it stopped playing the note and it's playing the, the uh, release stage of that. So it'll go for as long as that. When it gets to the third section, it'll just stop. The, the things that tail over will only go for one section. But again, the release is not gonna last that long anyway. So anyway, going back to section, going back to the kit track, um, that's not the correct, there we go. All right, sorry, we're in the wrong section. All right, so what can we do? Um, we can hit edit, go to the pad, again, shift play to stop that. In instrument edit, we're at sustain. So that's the first thing we can do if we want it to go for the whole section, we can just set a step to play it for the whole length, 128 steps, that's as long as we can go, cannot go more than 128, uh, whoops, sorry. You can go down, but you can't go more than 128. That's our max. Um, so you can do that. That's one thing. Um, the next thing you can do is you can edit the, um, the, the decay and the release. Now, this is the, the attack. You're just going to edit how it comes in. Right now, it comes in instantly, right? If we edit the attack, it's going to come in more gradually, right? It kind of fades in. Whoa, instead of, ah, um, that's probably not what we want. We'll leave that at zero for now. Uh, the next one is decay. Now this does matter because since our sustain is at 100%, all the decay is gonna do is make it last longer, um, which is important. So if we just, if, if we turned off this and turned up decay, right? Turn up decay to the maximum and turn up release to the maximum. If we just hit this once, it's a, uh, let's turn off sustain. Uh, do, 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 do. Where was sustain? I always forget on these menus. There we go. So put it no sustain, now it's a trigger. So if we just hit it once, now it's gonna go much longer than it would be before than it would before. Um, it's still not gonna go the full time it can because there's another setting we need to look at. Uh, also, even with all of these settings, if it's set to trigger, if it's not set to sustain and you hit it once, the maximum it's gonna go is about a minute. That's about as much as it can do. Um, but here's one more thing you can do if you want longer samples, you wanna get that minute and a half by just hitting it once. Again, I would recommend either putting it to sustain mode and holding down your finger or setting a step and setting it to 128 steps for that whole minute and 36 at, again, at 40 BPM. Um, or I would suggest doing this as a vocal take. Again, we'll talk about vocal takes later, but vocal takes can be, you know, six minutes of stereo or 12 minutes of mono as a single file and it won't fade out. They're made specifically for that. You can move them around. It is much better to work with those. We'll talk about that next time for longer samples, uh, or not next time, two times from now. Um, anyway, so what you can do, you can go to section select, and then you can hit uh, edit, and then the pad, the, the section you're in, section one, and then we can go down to uh, kit setting. Now in kit setting, you have a lot of different things you can change here. And again, in here you have attack, decay, and release. These are for the entire kit. So you can still, you can set these up as well, and that'll give you even more time. So this is the maximum of 63. 
Um, it's gonna affect the entire kit. That, that's a side effect, but for short samples, it's not gonna make a difference. Check it out. Yeah. They all sound exactly the same, but the, the side effect is if your if your long sample is set uh, to be no sustain, meaning it's a trigger, you just hit it once, doesn't matter how long, how long you hold down your finger, it's gonna just go wherever it goes. If it's set to no sustain to a trigger, setting up the, the options um, in in the instrument edit, uh, the, the decay and release, and setting those in section select and editing the pad and going to kit setting, you have to set those in both, the decay and release. If you set them both their maximum, you'll get about a minute before it starts, before it fades out. Um, so we're not gonna play the whole minute, but I mean, th this will go just hitting it one time for just over a minute doing this. So if, again, if you're using longer samples than that, uh, if you're using longer samples than you know, 10 or 15 seconds, I would highly, highly suggest not using the sampling engine and using vocal takes. Again, we will talk about that in a future video, but um, I, I hope this helped a little bit understanding how this works. We're gonna be talking about um, triggers and gates and envelopes more in the next video, because the next video is gonna be about using samples on a tone track specifically, and those are different. That, that's gonna, it's gonna change uh, how it works depending on if you're in a drum track or a melodic track. Um, and there are a lot of different settings we need to look at to control how that works. Um, so we will look at that next time. But uh, for now, I hope that helped you understand how the kit track works with samples, especially short samples. Short samples are a breeze. The Verse Lab is made to deal with those. You can tweak some things to be a little bit longer, but again, we will get into vocal takes soon. Those are your bread and butter if you're looking for something that can be used longer and more flexibly. Um, anyway, I hope you learned something. Uh, I hope this inspires you to be creative and make something useful. My name is Leroy. Uh, I will see you next time. Bye, guys.